and welcome to At Home Today. We're so glad you could be with us. It's always good to have the family drop by and say hello. We hope that your day's been a good one and we hope that you're going to kick back and just relax a little bit and uh, get your paper and pencil handy because today we're doing some low fat, low calorie uh, recipes and I think you're going to enjoy them. We're trying to bring special diet need recipes occasionally so that uh, everybody can kind of keep track of the particular diet that you're on. And um, I have to brag a little bit though because I have to show you some really cutie pies. Kids that are so special in my life because they're, they just are, that's all. They're, they're my great nephews, my two nephews. You met Mark, he's been on the show and he's cooked for us. Then his brother, Randy, I have to tell you. Now this is Mark, you know, he's on the open of the program. That little boy that sits at the table, now he's all grown up and this is Joshua. And his dad is Mark and he is going to first grade. <laughs> Look out school, okay, then this is Mark's brother, my nephew, Randy, his wife, Diana, and I told you before about Corey. Do you believe he just celebrated his first birthday? That's baby Corey, and he loves to wear sunglasses, you know. And here he is, and Josh just takes care of him so beautifully. They're great cousins. He just looks after him in the most wonderful way. Here he is. He was at Grandma's one day, and I stopped by to see him, and I just snapped his picture. And look at this. Here he is, Mr. Baseball. Is he a doll? That's our Corey. What a treasure it is to have family and how wonderful it is to have little ones growing into your family to keep traditions going on to and keep your family growing. And, and um, the Bible says that uh, when you have children, you're blessed. Now I know sometimes, come on mom, sometimes when they're driving you crazy, you're thinking, you call this blessed God? Yes, God calls it blessed because family is a blessing from the Lord. And children are a heritage of the Lord. And uh, if your home's blessed with children, then thank God for them. And just remember, in the good times when they're tucked in bed and you say, oh, they're the cutest little things I've ever seen. Aren't they sweet? To the times when they're running around under your feet and you're trying to get things done and you can't get the laundry done, you can't get supper on the table because they're driving you nuts. They're a blessing. No matter what, they're a blessing invest time into them. Invest yourself into your children. You, your husband, or your wife, invest yourselves into your children. You cannot do anything better than that in life. I believe that they're a priority with God and they ought to be a priority with us. So we feel like we're really blessed with our kids and we just love them to death. They're sweet. That Corey is the most pleasant little, well, jo you know, they're all pleasant. These, these babies are, they're sweet though. All right. Let me just get run down a few things about um, low fat and trying to get into the a diet mode if this is where you are. And these are some helpful hints to get, like when you dine out or if you're hungry for certain things, this is gonna help you over those times when you have the greatest stress, when everybody else is eating that real thick ranch dressing and you're saying, oh my goodness, I shouldn't have that, but it tastes so good. Let me give you some hints. Okay, number one. Always have your salad dressing on the side. Don't let them pour it all over your salad. Light is the best if, it can, if you can get it. In other words, if they have a light dressing, use that. And if you can't, take the regular dressing and mix it with, like if you have uh, two ounces of the regular dressing, mix it with two ounces of vinegar or two ounces of lemon juice. In other words, cut the strength of it in half by adding a little tartness to it. It tastes good, but it cuts the calories or the fats way down. Number two, on your baked potato, use non-fat yogurt instead of sour cream. Honest, it tastes great. And you can use all of that that you want. So you can put on there as much as you want. Number three, in a Chinese, Thai, Indian, Mexican, or Japanese restaurant, Order extra steamed rice when you order your entree. Take it home and then what you do is just eat half of the entree that night, take the extra rice home and then have it for your lunch or have it for another meal the next day. In other words, don't eat everything that's on the plate, the whole entree. Number four, eat plenty of unbuttered bread before and during your meal. Eat plain Italian bread instead of oil soaked garlic bread. That, you know, French bread and Italian bread has no fat in it. And very, and most of it doesn't even have sugar in it. It does have some salt, but if you load up on that, you'll fill up on that, then it'll be easier for you to say no 
to the stuff that really has a lot of fat in it. Number five, for dessert, have sorbet, sherbet, fat-free or low-fat frozen yo yogurt, angel food cake, or better yet, how about a piece of fresh fruit? There's something for dessert. Okay, number six, a few simple snacks. These are some ideas. Frozen seedless grapes or peeled then frozen ripe bananas. That's the first one. A sliced bagel, preferably a whole wheat, stuffed with a tomato, red onion, lettuce, and mustard. That sounds good on a bagel. How about a cored apple sprinkled with cinnamon, nutmeg, and then microwaved? And the last one, when eating out, in general, order vegetarian foods, seafood or poultry entrees instead of beef or pork. Order at least as much extra rice as the Chinese food entree. And in Italian restaurants, order entrees that are largely made of pasta. Don't go for the meatball platter or the sausage platter. Eat, order a pasta because the pasta is really good for you and doesn't have fat. And order uh, like spaghetti or linguine. And when you go to a movie theater, ask for air popped popcorn. That's one of the hard ones, boy, because that butter they put on there is to die for and it really will probably kill you in the end. But anyway, no, seriously, air popped popcorn. These are just some ideas that you can, it can help you over the bumps when you're just craving for something. Get some fr frozen grapes are delicious. We've had them before. Well, we're going to get started. We've got a couple of recipes I think you're going to enjoy. One of them is for a low fat bread pudding that you bake in the oven and some other surprises. We'll be right back in just a minute. Here's today's at home hint. Here's today's at home hint. To make a lighter boxed macaroni and cheese, instead of using the margarine in the milk as the package directs, mix one third cup non fat plain yogurt with the cheese packet. It makes the texture creamier and has a tangier flavor. If you have an at home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. Well, the first one that we're going to be making is called a garden cheesecake. And I've got to tell you that this only has uh, 180 calories and it's very, very good. It's, it's something that you make the day before. What you take is some of these uh, any kind of a snack cracker that has a cheese flavor to it. You crush it up into crumbs, all right? And then what you do is add some melted butter to it. Now, you're not going to eat a big piece of this. It's like 1 16th of the whole, of the whole um, pie is what a serving size is. But you're going to mix some melted butter, and you could use diet margarine in that, I'm sure. Probably the taste would be a bit different. And I know that there's one product line that you can get that has a, a diet cheese cracker. So you can really cut this real low in fat if you wanted to. I try to bring you low fat, low calorie or diabetic so that there's a variety because I know a lot of you have different needs. Not everybody is on a low fat diet. Not everybody is on a diabetic diet. So I'm trying to bring variety to you. And what you do then is just combine your, your uh, oleo or your margarine. And this is better to use in a nine inch spring form pan because it works really well and you just press with a fork just press the crumbs together just like so all over the bottom of the pan okay there we go to evenly cover it if you don't have a spring form pan you really need to get one because there's lots of uses with it if you're going to make a cheesecake or whatever it's important to have that. Okay, you're going to save the rest of the crumbs because it's going to go on the top of it. Just leave that sit there like that. Now we're going to put an 8 ounce of softened cream cheese. I need a bus pan. Okay, and we're going to add to that, we will be adding, this is uh, cream cheese, and we take one cup of unflavored plain yogurt. That's what that is, just plain yogurt. Let me reach here and get a utensil. Okay, and this is in the blender. You probably could do this in a mix with a mixer, but I, I think maybe not since we have to chop up some of the vegetables. I think you'd better try it with the, uh, the blender because that's what it calls for. And basically, just to begin with, you want to start that process. Just start at the lowest you can. The only, you're only going to blend this until it becomes smooth. 
You can tell by the way it labors if it's smooth or not. Now when it becomes free sounding, then you know that it has incorporated together. Now we'll start, thank you very much Sandy. Now we'll start adding our vegetables. First it's a half a cup of drained uh, pimento stuffed olives. And then one medium green pepper that we've left in large pieces. And you don't cut that in real small pieces because if you do, it'll be so pulverized you won't even see it in there. The smaller the pieces, it'll just liquefy it. So cut it in big chunks. One stalk of celery cut thickly again too. One medium uh, small onion cut in fourths. This is a little bit much. I don't think I'm going to put all that in there. All right. Now we need some salt. Use a teaspoon of salt. I know you're impressed I'm using this measuring spoon. You're, I'm impressed myself. It's there. I'm using it. Okay, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I may as well just do it right. There's our teaspoon. Okay, and a fourth of a teaspoon of paprika. One fourth teaspoon. You have to be careful because sometimes this can be potent if you got the hot stuff. All right, and a dash of red pepper sauce. Now you can use Tabasco or Louisiana red sauce or whatever. That's a good dash because this is going to have some kick to it. All right, now all we're going to do is again, we're going to turn this on. This will take a little time, okay, for all of that to incorporate. And it will keep mixing and mixing and mixing. Make sure I have everything. I think I do. And you only do this just until it, everything has liquefied. And you can see it's still chunky in there, but you don't want it to be totally thin and runny because then it, it's, it's no good. And you take this and you pour this right on your crusts. See how thick it is with the vegetables? It's a great way to use vegetables to, uh, let's say, doctor them up a little bit. So, you know, this is a lot of good vegetables in here. And if you wanted a thicker pie, you could use an eight or a nine inch. I think we, the one we made ahead of time, we did use a nine inch pan because it makes it a little bit thicker. But if you wanted to serve more people, you could certainly make it in this one. This would be a great idea for a lunch. A nice luncheon, somebody's coming over and you want to do something a little different, this would be it. All right. And then I just take the rest of these crumbs that have been mixed and you just sprinkle them on the top. And when you serve this, you're going to garnish with some additional vegetables, like a little piece of um, maybe some cucumber, maybe a couple of radish roses on the, on the side. This is so easy. Can you believe this? Because you're just going to refrigerate this for about 24 hours. You don't cook it. You don't bake it. This is all you do to it. That's the whole recipe right here. You cover it and you put it in to your refrigerator and I think this is a great way to use up some of the vegetables that maybe you get overwhelmed with you end up with too much you, these aren't the only vegetables you could do any other kind of vegetables that you'd want to too refrigerate for 24 hours cover it and refrigerate it okay all right now what we're going to do we're going to make chicken salad and this is a low fat chicken salad this is something uh, that is chicken, everybody likes chicken salad, and chicken is one of the dieters' friends, believe me. Dale, how much time do I have here? Okay. This is so simple, I'm just going to put it together for you and let you see. First of all, you take two cups of cooked chicken, and this is boneless, skinless. You boil it just with a little bit of onion and some parsley, and then you chop it up in nice little pieces, just like that. And we're going to take, um, let's see. We're going to take our pineapple, we're going to add that. That's a small can of crushed pineapple that we've drained. And some chunks, now I don't, don't cut your celery too, too fine when you put it in a salad like this. You want to hit, be able to bite into a chunk of celery because it tastes better. That's about, let's see, how much celery? Half a cup. Then we have some white grapes that we're going to add to the bowl. That's just a cup so far, all right. Now, this is a half a cup of fat-free mayonnaise. And we're just going to take some juice of a lemon, and we're going to add to that. That's about, oh, a tablespoon of lemon juice. And this is tarragon. This is a different spice that we don't usually use, but it works well with this. 
And what you want to do is just mix, this is the dressing for your chicken salad. Mix this up just like that. I think I might add just a little bit more lemon juice to that. Let's see. Have you ever seen one of these little reamers? These, this is handy. They don't cost very much at all. If you see them, grab one because to juice an orange or to juice a lemon, I'm telling you, this is great. The only thing you have to watch is that you don't get the seeds in there. And sometimes you do, then you pick them out, okay? <laughs> All right, so it just needs to be a little creamier. That's the consistency that I think will spread around, spread over this a little bit better, okay? Mix it very well, and then you just pour it into our salad. Nice low fat. This one has 199 calories per serving. But listen, it only has two grams of fat. It's pretty good, isn't it? And this recipe serves six, so you get a pretty decent amount of a salad for that, those calories and for those uh, grams of fat. I know it's really hard to get motivated if you've ever stepped back from dieting and you think, boy, you know, I was doing so good and then along came whatever, whether a picnic or Christmas or somebody's birthday or you just were feeling sorry for yourself or feeling bad for yourself. Whatever the reason is, it's important that you get back on because you're important. And I'm not talking just to you, I'm talking to me too. I'm talking to both of us. Because it's so hard to walk away. You get a taste for it again and then you can't, it's hard to back away and say, no, I'm not going to have that because you're, everything in you is saying, I want to taste it again. But, you know, we got to do it. We just have to take control of, our, of the situation and we have to decide we are going to try it again. So let's get motivated. And this is a good way. We're showing you ideas today. When we come back from our break, we're going to show you how to make a low-fat southern bread pudding. We'll be right back in just a minute. Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home, and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Well, if you've just joined us, we're doing low-fat, low-calorie dishes today. We've already prepared a garden cheesecake. Yes, I said cheesecake. And it's already in the refrigerator, chilling down. And we've prepared a low-fat, low-calorie chicken salad. We're going to be showing you all of these at the end of the program. Now we're doing the southern, low-fat southern bread pudding. We have six cups of bread cubes uh, here in the dish. And that's just slices of bread that you cut. And then we want to spray our eight inch square baking dish with Pam, okay? Just, okay, we'll spray that. And what you do is place the bread cubes into the dish and you wanna pack them in there. This is six cups now. Whoops, get back here, you. All right. And we're, let's distribute those evenly into this pan. Now this is going to refrigerate for about an hour before you bake it so that all the moisture is absorbed into there. But let me tell you what we have to pour over that. First we're going to take some egg beaters and we need three-fourths of a cup. So that's one carton plus half of another carton. And we're going to beat them in a large bowl like this until they get kind of frothy. They need to froth up a little bit. You could do this with a mixer if you wanted to or a little hand blender or whatever, but you can also do it with a whisk. And this has to be frothy, pretty good, almost there. Next, we're gonna add some sugar to this. And this is a half cup sugar. And we're gonna add some vanilla, which is about a half teaspoon of vanilla. Let me see, what else? How about some nutmeg and some cinnamon? We'll add those. Those are kind of basics for what we're doing here because that's, really uh, a big part of a basic bread pudding recipe. You have to have the cinnamon and the nutmeg, just makes it taste good. And this is all foamed up here like this, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna add two cups of skim milk. Okay. 
Now before I pour this over this, I want to add my raisins. And you could do this ahead of time if you wanted to, but I'll tell you why it's not important to dirty another bowl. Because you're going to mix this at the half hour mark while it's in the refrigerator chilling. And this is just a uh, half a cup of sweet apple and a half a cup of raisins. And you're just going to mix them around just like that. Now you could do it in a bowl if you wanted to, but it really, honest to goodness, does not matter. Because we're going to pour this over our bread cubes, raisins, and apples. And of course we want this to be absorbed. We'll cover it and put it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, we want you to bring it out, take a spoon, and just press down so that all the bread keeps getting absorbed. You have to do that. You can even stir it around if you need to. Just press it down, press it down, make sure all of it gets absorbed. Now, when, then you let it refrigerate for about another half hour. And when you're done, you preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you bake it for 40 minutes to one hour. Now I say that because some hours, some stoves are quicker, some ovens are quicker than others. So test it at 40 minutes. And if you're able to put a knife in the center, it comes out nice and clean and there's no juices flowing in the pan, then you know you're there. If not, keep adding five minutes or so to it. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. And here's how you can get all the recipes you've seen today here at home. We'll be right back. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right, no subscriptions. They're available online at no cost and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. We have given you some ideas for low fat and low calorie meals, uh, individual things that you can prepare for your family. Let's take a look at our garden cheesecake. Isn't that beautiful, colorful, and it tastes so delicious. A nice wedge of that has only 180 calories and just two grams of fat. Then you can see on our plate here, we have just put a bed of lettuce, added a couple of little cherry tomatoes. This is our low fat chicken salad. And we've added some of the little mini pitas which are very low in calorie. And also, you can get the variety that has no fat. It's really important. When you're doing no fat or low fat, try to cut the fats out. Read those labels, that's your biggest help. And then for our dessert, it's the low fat bread pudding. And we've added just a scoop of no fat vanilla yogurt, frozen yogurt to the top of it. And it makes a nice, a really nice addition to the bread pudding. I hope that we have uh, kind of inspired you today to try one more time. Hope that you'll think about how important it is for you to feel good and to be happy with the way you feel and the way you look. And if we can encourage you by some of our low fat recipes, I hope we have today. You're important, do it for you. Don't do it for anybody else. Don't do it for your husband, for your kids, for do it for you because you are very important in yourself. Lord bless you today. I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow. Be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. We'll see you then. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Fresh produce provided by Jordan Banana. Wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Dravosburg, Pennsylvania. Appliances provided by Decor Distinctive Appliances, a reflection of your good taste. Groceries provided by Foodland, where the answer is always yes. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.